<laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, I will get started then. Uh, my name is Carly. I use and I am a legislative aide in the Office of King County Council Member Germai Zonkali, who represents District 2 on the county, which includes the Central District. Um, so thank you all so much for inviting me to be here and talk about our Regional Workforce Housing Initiative. We're super excited about the potential of this legislation, um, and we've developed it with a coalition of partners, including unions, business leaders, uh, other government agencies and private developers. Um, and so, you know, just a really high level overview of the, of the legislation, um, our workforce housing initiative is a motion directing the King County Executive to develop an implementation plan to build housing funded by the county's excess debt capacity. Um, if this motion passes, the executive branch will do more exhaustive research and analysis to be documented and a plan delivered back to the council next year. And I know you all are probably all well, really well versed in why um, housing is so important and needed in our region, but uh, just really quick overview. Um, you know, there is housing crisis in King County and really across our country. Uh, census data, data shows that more than 124,000 low and moderate income households in King County are cost burdened with communities of colors and renters disproportionately likely to be severely cost burdened. And our low housing supply and affordability has really squeezed really fam many families and individuals. And, um, but increasing the housing supply in King County has a lot of challenges, including you know, our regressive tax system, uh, the regulatory landscape, zoning and construction costs. And so the council member really recognized that we need to use every tool possible to address the housing supply and increase it. And that's where the um, excess debt capacity really comes in. Uh, so getting more into the motion, there's really two parts of it, the housing model itself that we've uh, kind of developed and then the implementation plan. So the model, um, you know, King County has about $9 billion in untapped debt capacity. Uh, debt capacity is estimated by taking 1.5% of the total assessed value of property within the county, but the county typically doesn't use that excess debt capacity because it doesn't have a large ability to generate rent, so it'd make it hard to pay back the principal and interest on that debt um, without a stable revenue. But in our model, that stable revenue would be rents. Uh, so we would seek to use about $1 billion in that excess debt capacity uh, to issue bonds, and then banks would lend money at the low government rate, which would be lower than what private developers would have access to, and the county could then partner with housing agencies and housing developers to build permanently rent-restricted multiple-unit housing. People would get to move into that housing, and their rent would go back to paying the principal and interest payments on that loan. And so rent would be just what would be needed to pay that back and the operating costs on the units, which would, so that would ideally be lower than what that unit would be on the private market. And the second part of the motion is um, the implementation plan that we asked the executive to study this model and how feasible it is. We lay out a few aspects to be studied in the motion and in the implementation plan, including financing options to fund the construction, rehabilitation, or conversion of permanently rent-restricted multiple unit housing, recommendations on potential partnerships, public housing agencies, and housing developers, recommendations on what income levels could be housed in such units, and an explanation of how all projects will prioritize fair labor practices and an analysis on the feasibility of constructing new multiple unit housing versus acquiring and rehabilitating or converting existing, existing multiple unit housing. And this implementation plan, if this motion is passed, would be delivered back to the council on March 31st, 2025. But and so that's how the original motion is laid right now. It's currently in committee. So there's, you know, some changes that could go to it. We are putting together a striker with amendments. Um, and we expect- Okay, I said we were policy wonks, but striker. 
Oh yeah, so a strike through is basically just a big list of amendments. Um, like it's when you can kind of really change some of the language in there a lot bigger than if you were to do kind of like just a line amendment, which might which would edit probably like one or two words in a line in the language. Uh, so right now is a time where we get to kind of really get feedback from groups and stakeholders and uh, decide if we want to uh, change any of the language in the motion. Um, and then it would be voted on in committee and if passed, it would go to full council for votes. Uh, and if passed then it would be put into effect. Uh, so that's kind of a really quick overview of it. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, sorry, I might have missed it. Is this purely to fund housing or is it also potentially like mixed use buildings where we could also like rent out to small businesses? For example, if this is like truly workers housing, like they might also do childcare for somebody nearby. So it makes sense that you can also have like daycare or something available for the model story of the building or something. Yeah, I think the language in this in the motion is really focused on housing. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that we could take back to our team. Is it gonna be using the King County land or is the cost includes acquisition of the land? That would be something that would probably be developed more in the implementation plan. Uh, I'm, uh, it would probably be easier to use state-owned or publicly owned land because it would be cheaper, uh, but I think the implementation plan would get into the details of what land would be best used for the model. We have a question online from Elizabeth. When you talk about debt capacity, does that mean spending money we don't have? I think Sierra's answer okay. uh, kind of covers that of selling bonds. Um, and so then we would get a loan from the bank to kind of pay that back. Yeah. Elizabeth, does that address your, your question? Yes, thank you. I, I'm concerned about spending money now yeah, uh, that's and not, not being able to have enough later for other things that are essential. So I was just trying to be clear about what was being suggested. Thank you. Uh, we have a hand raised uh, from a group of folks, Linnea, Amar, Jackie, Justin, and Lisa. Um, do y'all want to come off mute and ask your question? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Amar, and uh, my question was uh, is about uh, it's actually like like a follow up question to Elizabeth. Um, so uh, the this this bond will be paid back not by increasing revenue but by revenue expected from rent. Uh, Can you speak up a little bit? Uh, yeah. And I'm also going to turn up the volume on the TV here. Oh, wow. Never mind. It was a technical issue on our side. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, my question is, uh, the bond will be paid back not by increasing revenue, tax revenue for the county, but by, by using rent, uh, which means uh, this very great solution will not be scaling in the near or far future because for many, many years, rent revenue will be mostly going to debt service uh, and uh, the, the housing authority that's uh, collecting this revenue, I think I think it's uh, King County Housing Authority and not a new authority, will not be able to uh, use uh, any excess income for a very long time to acquire or uh, build more housing. So the Tavel of Southern that is expecting to build is probably all what we are getting out of this one billion uh, given how it's proposed, right? If I'm understanding the question correctly, uh, it's kind of like how long it would take to build housing using this, uh, I think. No, actually, uh, it's not that. It's how long is it gonna be? Uh, uh, how long is gonna be before uh, rent revenue is used to pay back the one billion, the bond, the debt service? Uh, before before rent revenue uh, will then is is an access that we can use to actually build more uh, workforce housing. Okay. Uh, 
a note on that. Uh, I unfortunately am, don't know the answer off the top of my head. Um, I have a feeling that would be something that would be answered again in the implementation plan when we analyze how many units of housing could be built um, and the model. Uh, but that's a question I can take back and try to follow up on. I'm going to let Naisheen from How's Our Neighbors talk because she's having trouble raising her hand, but also has got some answers, I think, on that question. Um, yeah, thanks for being here, Carly. Uh, I believe in Montgomery County, it takes about five years, just, you know, the process of building um, before they start paying back the rents. And I believe at that point, they kind of um, almost do like a, I don't even know what it's called. They refinance, basically. Um and then Jack's point too is is um, yes, maybe that one billion pays for a thousand units, but in Montgomery County's case, because um, they found it to be such a successful program, I think two or three years into it, they issued another round of bonds for the same. I think they did five hundred million, another five hundred million. So yeah, there's nothing stopping uh, additional um, rounds of bonds later on. And then third is once the rents start coming back, they usually do make a profit and those profits go towards building more social housing. I also want to jump in and say that if we think long-term, we should be bold and think long-term. Vienna has been doing this for a hundred years um, and now housing is free. It comes out of the taps. Um, okay. uh, then those initial bonds are paid off off and you do start to see that very virtuous cycle and it's not that long i moved here when there was no light rail system um and now you can get all the way to a parking lot in linwood um <laughs> with the light rail so i i do encourage us to think about how this is a lot like light rail um it is a major investment that will pay off for generations uh alice you have your hand up muted. Sorry, had to come off mute. I'm really, I had a bunch of questions, but as I listen to Carly, the thing I'm the most confused about is what the private developer gets out of it. And specifically, you know, as a taxpayer, what I give the private developer, um, um, if they are responsible, you said that the, it's the private developer, not say the community organization or the housing authority that takes out the loan and is responsible for paying it back. That in that that certainly implies a profit mo motive that I'm not seeing as that I'm seeing as worrisome. Um, I think there's the private developers that we kind of worked with on developing this model. Um, they have shown an interest in just you know increasing the housing supply and recognizing uh, that it takes. That it will probably take all sectors to address the housing crisis, uh, but the housing itself would be owned and operated uh, by um, housing authority, like King County Housing Authority or the Seattle Housing Authority, and so that would hopefully, and so it would stay owned by them. Uh, so that the rent itself wouldn't would only be what would be needed on the on the debt. So taking out kind of the private interest in generating excess revenue. Can I can I maybe clarify then what Alice is getting at when we say private developer? Do we mean construction companies? Um, and are you saying that the intention of this financing program is that only public entities like housing authorities or public development authorities or maybe nonprofits would be actually owning and and operating the the housing? Yes. Okay. Um, cool. Can I go on? One layer further and say, do nonprofits count or? You know, I don't know if we have any language about nonprofits, um, but I can follow up with you on that. Okay. I guess, I mean, a similar question is, you know, in Montgomery County, they also do where even the state of the project could be mixed, where there might be half the units are like for profit market rate and the other half kind of get acquired with the benefit of the low cost financing that the you know, public entity is. So the whole you know, the building itself could be some mixed or 
theoretically, I don't know if it's in this proposal, but it could be a mixture of like for profit and not for profit. Yeah. Um, we asked. To study Carly, we're getting a request for you to speak up a little bit louder, and that's partly my laptop is serving as an AV system. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, yeah, we do look or ask for what mix of incomes would be needed to service the debt. Uh, kind of similar to that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sierra, you've got your hand up. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, I was just curious if I missed how people will apply to live in the housing, like who's going to be selected for this housing and whether or not the price will be dependent on income. Great questions. Uh, so those would probably be something that the executive would develop in the implementation plan, um, how people could apply to live in the housing. Uh, and yeah, what mix of incomes uh, would be needed to service the debt on any housing that's built? I'm, I'm pulling up the resolution here and sharing the screen. I think there's some language around um, uh, incomes that would be served. It's 50 to 80, 50 to 80% AMI to 120% AMI. I'm missing that here. I, I I promise you I did read all of this before. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, I've written it for it. Yep. Yep. Um, I know I got some questions ahead of time. What happens if someone moves in now that they have stable housing? They're no longer commuting an hour each way in and out of the city or uh, King County. Um, they're no longer spending a lot of money on childcare because they have spending less time commuting, they invest in their career, their income goes above 120% AMI, what happens to them? That's a great question. Uh, we don't have any language uh, in the motion um, addressing if someone's income rises um, as they live in the housing. Um, yeah, that um, is a, a good point uh, to kind of consider. Um, language would should address that at all okay i have just like a feature request is uh speaking in tech terms as someone who's spent a lot of time um advocating on behalf of the social housing uh developer in seattle um it's very much a core feature of the seattle social housing developer that yes to move in you must be in these income ranges zero to 120 percent with the ratio set according to what incomes actually are in Seattle, but you can never be kicked out for doing better. And in fact, that's good um, because then the social housing developer earns back that investment it made in your economic opportunity. Um, specifically, what I'm thinking about is uh, um, the social housing developer has slightly different language um, about uh, rents instead of saying, I think in this, um, in this uh, initiative, it says something like rent should not go up except to uh, service the debt and maintenance. Uh, the social housing bill is a little different. It's like uh, it has a very clear clause that says rent should not be more than 30% of a, a household income. Mm -hmm. um, and the pay which you can model, I think, is uh, is critical in, in making this financial model, model work. Because someone moves in, their income... God forbid they go to a boot camp and become a tech bro, and now they're making a lot of money. They don't move out, and uh, these financial en these entities that are funded by these bonds now earn back that investment instead of that person moving out and going to uh, paying Vulcan, uh, you know, three thousand dollars a month for a studio um, where there used to be the first interracial housing program in America. But anyway, um, yeah. So that's uh, a suggestion I have is that. Um, uh, to uh, to cap rents at, as a percentage of income um, and to very explicitly say people can uh, grow in place and, and exceed that um, that income threshold. Thank you for that. Uh, Elizabeth asks, will all this be built in Seattle? 
think it's meant to look at the whole county, uh, but details of where the housing could be built would definitely be in the implementation plan. Cool. Oh. I think you mentioned this earlier, but has there been consideration given to, let's say we raise a billion dollars doing this? You could, of course, spend it building new housing, or you could spend it acquiring existing housing, changing its purpose. Is that something the plan may address? Yes, yeah, it is a part of the implementation plan of looking at both uh, using and rehabilitating and acquiring existing multiple unit housing or constructing new housing. Gotcha. Any other questions from folks who are remote? You may have some chat messages. Ah, I've been monitoring the chat here. I think I've covered them all. I have a question in terms of timelines. So if this were you know passed as quickly as it could possibly be passed, like what type of time range are we thinking in terms of when the, the money would be issued? That that's a great question. Um I think it wouldn't be possible to know until the implementation plan is delivered to the council. It would probably include um, some idea of how long it would take to build housing or reconstruct housing. Um, but a more general timeline of like right now is that the motion is in committee. Um, it will be expected vote in committee on October 22nd. And then from there, it will go, if passed out of committee, it will go to full council for a vote. Hopefully, yeah, I can't say exactly when we can expect that at full council, but. What are the chances of that as a committee? Um, you know, I can't say. Uh, we, we definitely have heard, um, you know, positive feedback um, and, you know, interest about, um, about the model. Um, but yeah, so we're, we feel, we feel good about it. <laughs> At this point, you're just requesting a study, effectively. Yes. A plan, plan and implement it. Yeah. Yes. If the council passes it, does it go to vote for the people or how does it work after that? What is it? Um, it would go, if this, if this motion passes out of council, it would go to the executive. Uh, well, it would ask the executive to make the implementation plan or the fact that it's delivered to council. Um, if there's any needed legislation that would uh, be needed to put it into effect, it would be pulled. Together. Excuse me, I'm going to interrupt for just a second. People on Zoom, it's very hard to hear. I'm sorry, Carly, but when you turn your head to speak to someone in the room, you disappear. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, the question was whether this would need to go to voters. Um, and my understanding is that it does not, um, that if this motion is passed, the executive will develop the implementation plan, deliver it to council, um, along with, um, and exact language. Um, any necessary legislation to effectuate the recommendations of the implementation plan. Um, so it would not need to go to voters. Uh, Linnea, Amar, Jackie, Justin, y'all have your hand up. Hello. Yeah, this is Linnea, someone else from the watch party. Um, I had questions about um, the financial model and what happens in particular if rent doesn't cover all of the expenses. There's, I mean, there's the instance of like, is 80% AMI enough to cover expenses when you can't even afford a mortgage on that? But also, um, like, God forbid we have another pandemic and people don't have income, um, especially because the motion talks about how they will take steps to maintain a strong bond rating. So what is the plan for if rent doesn't cover expenses? Uh, I think ideally in the implementation plan, we would find what mix of incomes would cover uh, the loan and um, but and as as well as analyzing the risk that the county takes with this model. Uh, but if rent did not cover the loan, it would come out of the county's general fund. Yep. 
Uh, I am old enough to remember that Seattle was paying off the bonds on the kingdom after we imploded it. Uh, um, <laughs> Long time. Uh, um, Linnea, I, I do want to point out that the income ranges are zero to 120%, not zero to 80%. Um, so there is considerably less risk there um with that broader range of of incomes it's you know it's basically everyone except for the the tech bros and the ceos just the range actually excludes i think below 80 percent, right it's like 80 to one to now it's all no no now. it's there's okay. zero to 50 percent, 50 to 80 percent and yeah i dropped a link to uh the the page the the council page for this resolution it should be able to pull up the whole text for it, uh, due to the wonders of uh, the web, I can't link directly to the actual text of the legislation. I have one last question, since I can't raise my hand. Um, I'm sorry if I missed the beginning. I know I came in a few minutes late, but I always love to hear the origin stories of these kinds of things. It's super exciting. Like, did it come from community, like groups working on affordable housing or was it like the council member learning about it and, and kind of originating within the office or just kind of wondering where this all started from? That's a great question. I think the... Uh... I think it was, uh, you know, developers who were interested in the model. I, I know the council member was um, familiar with it, and I think uh, just trying to understand what role uh, the county could play um, in addressing the housing shortage um, and trying to be um, bold and sustainable um, in finding a model. Thanks. All right, um, I think we may need to move on to uh, the next bit of exciting stuff in our agenda.